I was recently asked how I'd resize images for a website and they had to be to an exact size. So I thought I'd show you the type of workflow that I'd use. Now, first things first, let's just come up to image. Let's go down to image size. And as we can see, this one is 4,874 by 3,252. And it is a resolution of 300. I'm going to click on OK. If we look down the bottom, we can see it is 122.7 megabytes in size in layers. And it is 45.3 megabytes flattened. There's a clue. The first thing I'll do is come to image. We're going to go down to duplicate and when duplicate opens the first thing i'm going to do is come to duplicate merge layers only and i'm going to put a tick in the box next we can rename it i'm just going to remove copy and i'm going to click on ok you'll now notice we've got one layer now the reason for doing this this is what our term has been my master copy so i don't want to change i don't want to adjust this in any way so i'm now going to close that down and i'm going to click on don't save right there it is. There's our image. Next, over to the toolbox or we'll try pressing C on the keyboard. That's going to give you the crop tool. Coming up to where it says ratio, I'm going to click in the window here. We're going to come down to width times height times resolution. Now with this, we're going to put in the figures and the dimensions that I was asked for were 12, 30, spacebar, using px for pixels now of course you could put in for inches cm for centimeters mm for millimeters etc whichever sizing you want to do just add that sh uh, shortcuts for those pressing tab on the keyboard takes us to the next window we're now going to add 922 again spacebar notice the way that the crop tool has contracted right in until we put in px telling it it is pixels Pressing tab on the keyboard, take us to the next window. This time we're going to put in 300 for the resolution. Right, coming down to the image, I'm going to click down. We can move this around, we can compose the image. I'm going to move it to the side. You can even come to the grab handles. You can recompose it like this as well. Now I'm going to double click inside the frame or click on the tick. That's going to apply the crop. There it is shooting off into the distance. And if we go to image, we can go to image size. It is now 1230 pixels by 922 pixels by a resolution of 300. Right clicking on OK or cancel doesn't really matter. Using Command 1 or Control 1, that's Command 1, Control 1, is going to take us to 100%. OK, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen the image. Now I'm going to use Command J, Control J, that's Command J, Control J, to duplicate the background layer. We're going to go over to Filter. We're going to come down to sharpen and I like to use the smart sharpen. It's a nice big, there it is, big dialogue so we can see exactly what's going on. Clicking down, I usually use an amount on most images around about 76. This one is pretty sharp anyway. It was produced using Aurora HDR, gives really good results. I have sharpened it before. For this demonstration, I'm going to put in 22%, going to leave the radius on one. It's removing the lens blur. We're going to click on OK, switching it on and off. And you can see it's uh, yeah pretty sharp. OK, let's put in a layer mask. Now, if I use Command I or Control I, that's Command I, Control I. We have now inverted the mask. You may have noticed that sharpening disappearing a little bit. I've got white as a foreground color. We are going to pick up the brush, press B on the keyboard. I'm going to click down. I'm going to go around this area here. I'm just going to sharpen this part of the picture. You can always press the backward slash key as well. So you can see exactly where you've been. So just removing that up into those uh, grasses here. And again, because I am using 50% opacity, I've reduced it down. I forgot to mention that. Sorry about that. Press five on the keyboard. It'll take you from 100 to 50%. And uh, right, off we go. Going to use the left hand square bracket just to make the brush a little bit smaller. Going to come up around this area here, pressing the backward slash key again. And there it is. Now you can always come to the opacity slider. We can reduce that down as well. Job done. Well, it will be when we use command E or control E. That's command E or control E. We have merged it down into one layer. OK, the next thing, we're now going to save it for the website and we're going to come to File. We're going to go down to Export. We're going to come across to Save for Web Legacy. Right. And when Save for Web Legacy opens, you'll notice that we have got 
two images. That is the original and I am using two up. So we can see the original and we can see the after. The color, yes, this was originally a pro photo uh, color space. We are now using sRGB. And if we come over to the panel here, you can see that I've actually got a JPEG. So you've got GIF, JPEG, PNG 8 bits, uh, PNG 24 and WBMP. The quality I've got is high. Now, if I go to low and you can see the way comparing, even though we got the color one to the other, that really has degraded it. We've got a quality of 10. If we go to medium, we'll take it to 30 and you can always use the slider as well to take it up. If you go to 60, there it is there. It's now become high. Now, the other criteria was that uh, they wanted 500 kilobytes in size, so we can take it up even higher. Let's go to very high. And if we look down here, that's 660. So if we come to the slider, we can now reduce this down. So you can actually be very accurate in the sizes that we're producing. Just going to take it up very slightly into around about that area there. And there it is. That's pretty close to 500. OK, slightly over. You have also got progressive. We've now got 499, so that's even closer. You might want to leave it like that. I do prefer to use the optimized. Coming down, we have got convert to sRGB. Now, bearing in mind, all websites tend to use the sRGB color space. That's what we're going to leave it on. We've also got the monitor color. In other words, I'm looking at it with the monitor color, but you've also got these as well. Just experiment or use the one that you've set up. If we come down even further, we've got the image size. Yes, you can resize your pictures here as well. You can even put in full size pictures. All you need to do is swipe across. I'm going to put in 1024, which is another popular website size. And you can see it is linked. So it has dropped it down to 768. Right, let's just swipe across here again. And I'm going to put back to what it was, which was 12, not as big as that. There it is, 12.30. Right, thought it looked wrong. Coming across to the quality. Now, when you resize it, this is the quality. It's got by Cubic, by Cubic Smoother, and by Cubic Sharper. Now, I tend to leave this on by Cubic and uh, try to spot the difference between using the Smoother or the Sharper. It is very difficult. But do not use by Linear or Nearest Neighbor. Always use the by Cubic. Right, next, now that we've done that, just checking it over, we have got, there it is, there's our JPEG image. It is 512 kilobytes in size. It's going to take 96 seconds to open because if you drop on this, yeah, it's shown it, that's dial-up modem, so don't pay any attention to that. You have also got the uh, 2 megabits per second. There it is for cable, so it's now going to take 3 seconds. Let's take a look at the metadata. Can be important. You can have none. You can have copyright. You can have copyright and contact info. You can also have all except camera info. So if you're going to use this for use on digital projection, that type of thing, you may not want your camera information to be shown. And uh, you can do this one or all will just leave everything intact. Right now we can go to save. I'm just going to remove these. Just going in, putting in R and just going across to the beginning and removing that dash. Right. Next, I'm going to click on save just off the screen. There it is. It's gone to my desktop. Let's close this down. We're going to take a look. So if I come back over to there it is I'm going to right click. I'm going to open with and Photoshop CC. It's arrived. OK, let's take a look at file. Let's come down to file info. And it has now got, there it is there, there's the camera, the basic, it's got all the basic information. So everything is listed because I clicked all. Next, let's just take a look at the crop tool because I did mention that uh, the person had a lot of images to do for a website. So if this is something that you're going to use regularly, what you can do is come back to the width, height, resolution. Click on this. We're going to go to the bottom of the drop down menu to new crop preset. It's given us the size. There it is, 1230, 922, 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to click on OK. Right, let's just click stop to that. Because next time you want to use this, when you go there to your width times height to this drop down menu down the bottom, that's the one you've set up. That's all you need to do now is click on that and it will set it up for you. 
So there it is. Hope you found the video useful. Please like and subscribe. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.